Hey there, folks. It's been a while since I've done a real Battlefield video. I did post up a few live streams from the BF1 beta, but those weren't edited or anything like that. I figured that now that all the YouTubers that actually matter have voiced their opinions on the BF1 beta, I'd voice mine. And bear in mind, these are just my opinions. I know I'm a nobody, and I don't actually expect anyone from DICE or EA to listen. But here we go. A quick note before I start my rhetoric. The video clips you're watching may look a bit weird. You'll note it's kind of difficult to see the squad list, the minimap, and a few other things on the sides of the screens. The reason for that is that I was playing BF1 on an ultra wide screen 3440x1440 screen. I set my recording software, OBS Studio, up to crop out the excess pixels on each side and leave me with a 144p video. But the results almost look like I'm zoomed in. It's not a zoom, it's a crop. Now then, I follow a few YouTubers, and all but one of them have complained vociferously about the new Conquest scoring system. While this is somewhat childish of me, the basic summary of their complaints is something along the lines of, Wah. I want my kills to count towards winning the game. I don't actually want to play the objective. Well, too bad. I, for one, am incredibly happy with what DICE has done to the Conquest scoring system. The basic message is, PTFO or GTFO. If you want to win the game, take the flags and hold the flags. Your focus needs to be on flag cap count, not on the cap busting count. It doesn't mean that kills don't matter. They do, but it's indirect. Killing the opposing team members clears the flag and allows your team to cap the flag faster, of course. It also prevents the other team from taking your flag from you. The results will be a game win, and that's what matters, not your kill-to-death ratio. Now, there are game modes that aren't objective-based, or are objective-based, but where your kills actually count. Those games are things like Team Deathmatch and Rush. If you want your kills to count, go play those games. Stay out of Conquest because you're not helping. Another complaint I heard was that tanks are too overpowered. In my opinion, they're not. I have suspicions that DICE is going to cave to the whiners and nerf some of the aspects of the tank, but I don't think it's necessary. I do think there are some tank countermeasures available to the assault class that could use some changes. Specifically the anti-tank gun. Forcing the assaulter to go prone or find a ledge to deploy the bipod on just takes too much time, and it leaves him vulnerable to the opposition, including the tank. Yes, I know the size of that weapon would make it nearly impossible in reality for a soldier to fire that while standing up, but as is often pointed out, this is a game, not a simulation. The gun's size is akin to the engineer's pelum from Battlefield 2142. It was a beast of the gun, but he could wing it around while he was on the move. If DICE refuses to remove the bipod requirement, then they need to add a few more rounds to the assault's ammo count and make each one hit a lot harder, as in two shots and any tank is in flames. Again, this requires the assault class to be prone or against a ledge, making him incredibly vulnerable. So each shot has to hurt more. I think TNT also has to have some glue on it. Doing Jihad buggies has been a staple of the Battlefield franchise since at least Battlefield 2. There's really no reason to have removed it, and it would make fighting against tanks a whole lot easier with the associated risks involved. The tank could just shoot you. So DICE, please add some tape or some glue or other sticky material to the TNT. I only ever got to play the beta. Again, since I'm a nobody, I was never invited to or offered access to the alpha, which means the desert is the only map I got to play. Based on that map alone, the two useful classes were Assault and Supply, and those of course were the classes that were played the least because their firearms basically suck. But with the sheer amount of armor on the map, be it tanks or armored trucks, the other two classes, Sniper and Medic, were basically useless. Yes, the Sniper has K-Bullets, but they were of less use than what the Assault class has available. The problem is, the Assault needed to fire so many rounds to kill a tank, he'd inevitably run out of rockets. And since no one was playing Supply, he'd be shit out of luck. 
DICE needs to address the SMGs and the LMGs so that more folks are encouraged to play the Assault and Supply respectively. Neither gun class needs to be a powerhouse, but they do need to deal more damage and be more accurate than they currently are. The SMGs are pretty self-explanatory. They're useless beyond a very short distance. Great. It makes sense, but it's going to result in fewer people playing that class because not all engagement distances are up close and personal. The LMGs become lots more accurate when the supply guy either holds the trigger longer or goes prone and deploys the bipod. In both cases, he's putting himself at severe risk of getting picked off by a medic or a sniper. The basic results of all this were that fewer and fewer assault players to counter the tanks and fewer and fewer supply guys to help keep folks armed, which leads to people bitching about the tanks being overpowered. See how that works? Make those two classes more useful than they are for taking out other soldiers, and you'll see more people playing them. Further, the supply guy has to have TNT available to him so he too can deal with tanks. That really can't be a debatable point. But those are my opinions of the gameplay of BF1. As far as some of the problems I ran into, most of those were control related. I always remap my keyboard bindings because I can't play with the usual WASD keys. I reassign all of my movement and other keys. One keybind that I couldn't find in the settings was the vehicle repair. It defaults to the X key and I always remap my X key to go backwards. I could never find a way to remap the repair key, so I'd end up in a repair cycle while I was trying to back my tank up. That was a bit annoying, and I hope DICE addresses that. Further, I noticed that the horse used the default movement keys even though I'd read map them for on foot, in vehicle, and in aircraft. It didn't matter, the horse could only be controlled with WASD. One of the armored vehicles, I think it was the truck, responded the same way. Even though I'd read map the controls for the vehicles, the truck assumed WASD. All that said, all in all, I enjoyed the game. There were some immensely frustrating moments, but there always are with Battlefield. There were also some insanely gratifying experiences to counter the former, which is again, Battlefield. I do hope a DICE addresses the bugs, and perhaps some of the balance issues. My concern is that they'll listen to the, whiner versus the whiners versus the folks who think through things a bit more. But it's the whiners that have the loudest voice, so I guess we'll have to see how it turns out at the end of October. Either way, I can't wait. What do you think? Did DICE do it right? Did they mess something up? What did you like and what would you like to see changed? Let me know in the comments below. No one from DICE is likely to read them, but I always enjoy doing so. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you back on the battlefield another month and a half.